let us discuss this result. So in this result, we have a function f which is defined on closed interval a b and it is discontinuous only at one point. We have to prove that this function is Riemann integrable. Okay. So here I have considered this function f which is discontinuous at point c belongs to that open interval a b. See one more thing we have that is function is a bounded function. So you know the definition of bounded function. So therefore by definition we can write therefore there exists some positive real number m such that such that we can write mod f of x less than or equal to m for all x belongs to closed interval a b right. So this is definition of bounded function. So we know that mod a less than b if and only if minus b less than a less than b. So that result we can use here. So what we have mod f of x less than or equal less than or equal to m. So we can write implies minus m less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to m. And this is true for all x belongs to closed interval a b. So very important thing we have got here. I am calling it as one. Okay. So after that, what we have to prove? We have to prove the function is Riemann integrable. So here we have a two different methods to prove the function is Riemann integrable. Either we can prove upper integral is equal to lower integral, then function will be Riemann integrable or we have a epsilon definition also. Okay, so we can also call it as a Riemann criterion. So here we are going to follow the second method. That means with the help of epsilon, we are going to prove the function is Riemann integrable. So let us take one epsilon first. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given. So after that, I am selecting one delta. Okay. So let delta is equal to. So my delta is such that epsilon by 12 m, which is obviously greater than 0. Epsilon, this same epsilon I have taken. M means what? Here we have got some m positive real number. That positive real number I have taken. 12 is positive. So all three numbers are positive. So they, therefore our delta is also positive. Okay, so let me mention such that such that the delta should satisfy two conditions. That means a should be less than c. Sorry, I sh a should be less than c minus delta and b should be greater than c plus delta. Okay, let me show it here. That means if you see, see is here c minus delta. So c minus delta will be here. We are subtracting delta from c and c plus delta c plus delta should be here. That means C minus delta should be greater than A and C plus delta should be less than B. So this thing we should have. Get it? Okay. So this is also very important thing we have. So after that, what will I do? So the information is function is discontinuous at C. But if you consider this interval A to C minus delta for that interval function is continuous. Getting? So let me mention here, here F is, F is continuous on a to c minus delta a to c minus delta for this interval function is continuous in previous video we have already proved a continuous function is Riemann integrable so the function is continuous so therefore f is Riemann integrable on this closed interval let me mention so therefore or implies f is r integrable r integrable on closed interval a to c minus delta function is Riemann integrable so that's why we can use that epsilon definition so for given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a partition p such that upper sum minus lower sum less than epsilon right so epsilon already we have here we have taken epsilon greater than 0 so i can simply mention therefore there exists a partition there exists a partition i'm calling it as p1 of closed interval a to c minus delta such that such that upper sum that means u p1 f minus l p1 f less than epsilon very important thing we have got okay so what we are saying so we have taken a partition p1 of this closed interval okay such that upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon okay see I am doing uh, take, uh, doing an adjustment instead of epsilon, I am taking epsilon by 3. I will call it as second inequality, right? So after that, let us go further. So similarly, we can say the function is continuous on C plus delta to B also. Function is discontinuous only at one point C, getting. So for this interval, function is continuous. Similarly, we can say the function is continuous for next interval also. Let me mention similarly, similarly, 
we can say we can say f is continuous on c plus delta to b so function is continuous on c plus delta to b so every fun continuous function is riemann integrable so therefore f is r integrable f is r integrable on c plus delta to b function is riemann integrable on c plus delta to b so similarly we can say there exists a partition p2 okay there exists a partition p2 of this closed interval such that upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon instead of epsilon i will take epsilon by 3 okay there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so therefore we get this inequality number 3 okay so there exists a partition p2 of that closed interval such that upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon by 3 see now what will i do let p is equal to p1 union c minus delta to c plus delta union p2 okay so what i'm considering this p1 which is a partition of closed interval a to c minus delta this interval c minus delta to c plus delta and p2 that means partition of closed interval c plus delta to b okay so it is let me mention it is partition it is partition of what partition of closed interval ab okay so this is a partition of closed interval ab so one partition we already had second partition also so simply i added this middle interval so i got a partition of closed interval ab so let us find upper sum and uh, lower sum now then upf upper sum so upper sum with this partition so obviously nothing this is nothing but upper sum of uh, part of f with partition f getting sorry partition p1 plus that means upper sum related to this partition p1 when you talk about this interval so you know that upper sum means what summation capital mi delta xi you remember okay so capital mi delta xi capital mi capital mi means maximum let me mention here so this is supremum of supremum of f of x where x belongs to c minus delta c plus delta right so capital mi this is capital mi delta xi means length of interval so this is delta this is delta that means we will have two delta correct plus plus upper sum upper sum of function f with partition p2 so i hope all of you understood upper sum with partition p is nothing but upper sum with partition p1 plus upper sum with partition p2 plus this part this part we take capital mi delta xi getting delta xi means length of interval so length of interval is 2 delta i wrote and capital mi that means supremum of so simply i wrote the definition there but see supremum see in inequality number 1 we have already said there f of x less than or equal to capital m so the same thing i can use here that inequality i can use here capital m okay so my supremum of this function is less than or equal to capital m so we can write this is less than or equal to u p1 f plus 2 delta m plus u p2 f let me mention from 1 okay from 1 okay so let us go further so this is our upper sum which is less than or equal to this one so now let us talk about lower sum so lower sum with partition p of function f is equal to same thing same technique i will follow so this is lower sum of f with partition p1 getting plus when you talk about this interval so the low in case of lower sum we take summation small mi delta xi delta xi means length of interval length of interval is 2 delta and small mi means infimum of infimum of f of x and where x belongs to c minus delta c plus delta so normally we write after it this thing we write after it but there is no more space so that's why i'm writing here plus lower sum lower sum of f with partition p2 that means lower sum with partition p1 plus lower sum with partition p2 plus Uh, we have considered this interval also, and we got this term. Okay, so infimum, the minimum value of a function. So if you remember inequality number one, our f of x is greater than or equal to minus m. That thing we can use here. Okay, f of x is greater than or equal to minus m. So therefore, what can we write? So this is less than or equal to lower sum. Okay, so I should write this is greater than or equal to lower sum with partition p one f plus. 2 delta and here we have got minus a right plus lower sum 
P2F. I should mention here from 1 again, from 1. Okay. So, uh, see, already we have written 1. You can go back in this video and you can see what is inequality number 1. Simply, I am using it. After that, what will I do? I will multiply both sides by minus 1. So, you know that when we have inequality and when we multiply by negative number, we should change the inequality. So, here also I should change the inequality. Let me remove this one. Okay. Let me remove this one. So, see, let us continue. And yes. So, if you multiply by minus sign, lowers minus LPF, getting inequality will get uh, change. So, greater than or equal to should be replaced by less than or equal to minus LP1F plus 2 delta M. I should write. Actually, there is minus sign, minus, minus, plus here minus L P 2 F here should be minus sign huh? since when you multiply by minus sign inequality change all sign will get change. So yes we will call it as uh, 4 and this will be 5. So let us add 4 and 5 adding 4 and 5 let us see what will happen we will add left hand side first after that we will talk about right hand side. So here left hand side is U P F right U P F if you add but it has already minus sign LPF right less than or equal to same inequality is maintained next U P 1 F right U P 1 F U P 1 F minus sorry there is already minus sign minus L P 1 F I hope all of you are getting getting so we are simply adding but some terms have already minus sign so if you add we should carry the minus sign there getting so upper sum plus this one already minus sign so 2 delta m and that 2 delta m that means we will have 4 delta m right okay let us go further we should add the third terms also but see u p 2 f let me write u p 2 f plus this one but it has minus sign l p 2 f yes we got okay so let me remove the diagram so we will have some more space to write okay do you remember expression 2 so expression 2 says u p 1 f minus l p 1 f is less than epsilon by 3 okay from 2 we can write so i'm keeping this 4 uh, delta m as it is plus u p 2 f minus l p 2 f yes from 3 we can say it is less than epsilon by 3 let me mention from 2 and 3 okay so see this is equal to epsilon by 3 so do you remember our value of uh, that value of that delta that was 12 by let me mention plus 4 it is i think epsilon by 12 m m plus epsilon by 3 it is better to take delta should be less than okay so should be less than that thing less than or equal to you can take so after that this is equal to epsilon by 3 here uh, 4 4 will get cancelled so epsilon by mm will get cancelled 3 plus here epsilon by 3 so you will have epsilon so finally what we get therefore upf right minus lpf we got this is less than epsilon yes condition is satisfied getting so therefore what can we declare therefore f is r integrable so therefore f is r integrable r integrable on close interval a B getting now so actually here we have done some adjustment so initially we had taken delta is equal to epsilon by 12 m but it is better to take delta is less than or equal to epsilon by 12 m for okay so that will be better so here i did the same so all terms will get cancelled simply we got epsilon so upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon so by riemann criterion we can say the function is riemann integrable so therefore function is riemann integrable that this is our conclusion so what is the result that is more important that means if we have a function with single discontinuity definitely it is Riemann integrable okay so make a screenshot of it after that we will stop thank you bye bye